Hello there, this is Russ Buecher from Control My Nikon, and in this video we're going to take a look at how to set the file names and folder names for your captured images. The place where we set this is right here under the body tab. So here under folder is where we set the path and here it'll save to Z drive images slash SM1 and just for our test today I'm going to change this. I'll create a test folder. Now this information is stored in the current profile. So after you type it in, you can always go save or control S. Now for the file name, I'm just gonna leave it with this. This is known as a file token. And this particular token represents the main counter. This at sign always needs to be present at the beginning of a token. If you like to see a list of the different file tokens that are available, just go to the help under configuring files and folders. And you'll see there's folder tokens that you use up here in the folder field. And file tokens you just use in the file name field. So this one I'm using here for file names is the main counter. So this main counter will increment the counter every time you saved an image. So I'll go here to counter and let's reset it to a value of zero. So the next image I capture will be zero dot whatever file format we're saving in. Now, if you are saving in a combination format, such as RAW plus JPEG, the RAW and JPEG file names will be zero dot and then whatever the file extension is. So let's give it a try. I'm connected to my D800, and I just have a scene here in a light box, and we're looking at a piece of mineral. I'm not too sure what this is. It could be iron pyrite. and let's capture the image. And you can see a transfer. I'll go to the browser and we can see that two files have been stored in the test folder. Originally we were on the archive folder and because in the thumb strip I have it set to sync, whenever we save a new image that new image will be immediately displayed in the image browser. I'm just going to resize this a little bit. There we go. So let's capture it again. And you can see here the counter is incrementing. Now if you were to reset the counter back to zero and then save again, you'll get a duplicate Whenever Control My Icon encounters a duplicate file name, it will not overwrite the file, but it will create a new file with a slightly different file name. Let's try it. So we reset the counter to zero, and we'll shoot. So when there's a duplicate, it puts the double dashes and a little bracket here indicating which version of the duplicate it is. So here's the first set of duplicates, and we capture again. Here's the next one. If you were to try something without a counter at all, like this, and we capture, the first one will be okay. The second one will indicate a duplicate. The third one will increment the duplicate counter. You see in the brackets here, there's now a one. Okay, I'm just going to delete this folder. Let's take a look at some more of these folder tokens. So 
So here's a token called at D1, and that uses the current year, month, and day as the folder name. So this is a good way to divide your images up by the day that they were captured. And here you can see the folder name is 2014-06 for June 28th for June 28th. So tomorrow you'll have a new folder. Let's look at some more of these folder tokens. You can also use the file extension. So if we went here, went at D1, and maybe like this, so you can combine these different tokens. Now we have a separate folder for the JPEGs and a separate folder for the raw images. And sometimes it can be a real hassle when you're shooting in both and they are kind of all getting in the way because really if you're reviewing your images you just want to see maybe one of them and not both of them otherwise it takes up a lot of room in a folder so you can split them out this way or if I go back here where we did not split them out you can right click on the thumb strip and go to configure and say well I only want to see JPEGs here and now I only see my JPEG I'll put it back to include raw as well. So let's capture another image. And let's take a look at the rest of those folder tokens. The rest of these tokens here are used when you are doing a batch shooting workflow. And that is up here. Control Mine Icon has the ability to link data with an image. So if you were shooting, for example, a product shoot, and you put your first product down, and if you have imported some of the product data in the Control Mine Icon, you can scan the barcode for that product, or just enter in an identifier for the product, and the control my icon will query that data that you had imported and come back with some other data. And this data can be embedded into a folder name or a file name or into the IPTC metadata of the actual image file. And that's real handy to allow you to archive your images and easily search for them. And there's a separate video on batch shooting that will show you in more detail how to set up your file and folder name tokens to uh, be used for batch shooting. Now let's take a look at the file name tokens. There's a file name here at, at DT1. Let's give it a try. So at DT1 shows the last two digits of the current year, month, date, hour, minute, seconds, and millisecond, which is one thousandth of a second. So it can be a very long name. However, there's no chance of duplication here because no image is captured in the same millisecond. And I'm just going to switch to JPEG only here. And you can see they're all different. 
and these will also be in order. Sometimes when you're capturing images and you want to export these images out to another application, it's important that the images are imported into that application in the order in which they were shot. Using this file token will ensure that they're in chronological and alphabetical order when listed in the importer on those programs. Okay, let's try some more. And we have at DT2. It's exactly the same as at DT1, except it does not have the milliseconds. There is a very small chance of duplication here, especially if you are going to be shooting burst. And we have MCT, which is the main counter. Let's just go back to that for now. And you can combine the folder and file name tokens as well. So let's go here. We'll put the basic date token for the folder. And this is a pretty popular way to keep all your images organized. Just put it by day and with a counter or a date token as the file name. Now the rest of these file name tokens are used by the batch workflow. Let's go back to the folder here for a moment. Now the folder has to be a network drive or a map drive. You cannot use a UNC file name here. So you know how you can have a network descriptor that starts with double slash and then someone's computer slash and then something else. That will not work here. You'll need to map a drive to that network location. Now you can use this button here to find the drive as well. Now on some computers, you can save to the computer, to the card in the camera and the computer, or the card only. And only Nikon's newer bodies allow you to do this. If your body is unable to do this, this option will be grayed out and will only say computer only. Whenever you save an image to the card with this first selection of card only or card and computer, the file name on the card will be whatever file name format you have configured in the LCD menu on the camera body. So these folder and file names do not affect files stored on the card. If you'd like to back up the files that you have captured with Controlman icon, you can enable file mirroring. Mirroring will copy your captured images over to another folder as they're being captured. To enable file mirroring, you just need to go up to the Tools menu, Preferences, Miscellaneous tab, and put a check mark beside Enable File Mirroring. And then you can enter the path where the files will be backed up to. So here I have on my G drive a CMN backup folder. Now for this demonstration, this drive is just on the same computer as my Z drive, so that's not really a practical backup but you could use a mapped drive here instead and back up to that or a removable drive such as a memory stick or USB drive instead. And if you click on this button here you can select the folder. Okay let's give it a try. 
So I'll capture an image. That's uh, 8.jpg, and I'll do a couple more here. And if I go to my G drive, my CMN backup folder, images, test, it has the same file name and folder name format that you configured for your main saving. You see it's the same thing. So that's it. That's how you set your folder and file names in Control My Icon. Happy tethering.